So Buju in Denaway Maganadog, uh Ivy Neen and Dijna Karajagi Nashimong, Awanakwe Ojibwe Mong, Gichi Onigamin and Dunjaba, uh American Indian Community Housing Organization in Da, Ogamabane, O Ogamabanes, uh Nin Nemoshe. Um <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, all my relatives. Uh, my name is Ivy Vinio. Uh, I am a direct descendant of a Grand Portage band of Ojibwe citizen, and I live in Onigaminsin, Duluth, and I work at the American Indian Community Housing Organization as our culture programming coordinator. And uh, miigwech for joining us this evening for Apakosaganake, uh, making traditional tobacco with Dr. Arnie Vinio. And um, I'm just gonna kind of go over some things um, before I turn it over to, to Arnie. Um, if you could in the chat, please uh, share where you're um, coming from, like what traditional, uh, native lands that you reside on. That would be really, really great to honor the native people um, who live who live there and still live there. Um, I am, of course, uh, coming zooming in from Aiko, which is uh, on the ancestral, um, traditional, and um, contemporary lands of the Anishinaabe, Dakota, Northern Cheyenne, and other tribals, tribal nations. And um, a little bit about ACO. ACO is an indigenous-led, people-first nonprofit organization in Duluth. We do many things, uh, housing. Uh, we have a domestic violence shelter. Uh, we have cultural arts. We have cultural programming. Uh, we have a focus on indigenous uh, food. Um, initiatives and um, we have social enterprise and retail space. And actually I'm in indigenous first art and gift shop right now. Um, maybe I can turn it around so you can kind of see Pat Cruz's uh, birch bark pieces for sale there. We, we work with um, close to 80 indigenous and BIPOC artists in the region. So I'm just gonna turn it around so you can kind of see our gift shop here. Um, so in that corner over there, we got some indigenous foods, wild rice. Um, we have some paintings, uh, fine art. Um, so whenever you are in Duluth, please stop by uh, ACO and Indigenous First. And um, our our, um, all of our work is anchored in our mission, which is to honor the resiliency of indigenous, indigenous people by strengthening communities and centering indigenous values in all aspects of our work. Our philosophy is that every American Indian person deserves to live in a nonviolent and non-threatening environment and, that, and has the right to be treated with dignity and respect. ACO is fortunate to have the, the financial support of our of tonight's uh, event funder, uh, Minnesota Department of Human Services Behavioral Health Division. Um, and it's just so nice that they allow us to bring culture and spiritual uh, knowledge um, with these sessions um, because having that um, builds on our um, identity as Native people. And um, yeah, so, and it brings healing. So I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Arnie Vinyo, who is a Mille Lacs band of Ojibwe citizen uh, and a family practice physician at the Minoyoan Human Services Clinic on the Fond du Lac Ojibwe Reservation, has been for 24 years. He is very connected to his Anishinaabe traditions uh, language, culture, and spirituality. Um, I'm glad he's here tonight to share some of his knowledge with us. 
Um, please continue to stay muted and you feel free to keep your video screens on. Uh, there will be time for questions, but if you have a question during the session, uh, feel free to put that in the chat. And I'm going to stop talking now and turn it over to uh, Olga Mabanese. Miigwech, Ivy. And miigwech, Becky Nelson, Zoom set up her extraordinary. Anin in Denue Maganado. Bungi Yatagon in Nata Ojibwem Nidaka Kavijun Jujibun Moyan. Dr. Vini on the Indigenous Kazaka Nashimo, the Dash Ogamab and his Indigo Jibwemo. Missy Zaga Igini Nin Dunjaban, a Gizzi Nin Kutem. When you mean Saint Dam and Oyao and Dunanoki, or one equation Kaza Nuru, Minua, Ninimoshe, Bejigun in Janus, Miss Kupanesi, and Kazma Kosis, Gada, Bajatum, and Nishanabi Mo and Jibama. So by way of introduction, Anin in Dinoe Maganadug, we have two sort of hellos that we use, Buju and Anin. Buju is kind of an everyday sort of familiar person greeting. And Anin is what we say to people that we haven't seen for a long time or that we respect or we're just meeting. And Anin is the one I meant to use. Dan Jones, Gagi Gabane, Siban, and uh, Dennis Jones, Pepe uh, Hambanes, both say that a humbling statement is important when you're introducing yourself, that even fluent speakers will say they don't speak very much Ojibwe. And that's what I said. Um, and that wasn't being humble, that's the truth. And uh, so learning my language, uh, learning Ojibwe language, and uh, Kagi Gabo, James Vuklich teaches us that that our lessons are buried in our language. Our, our ancestors were so wise that they knew we would forget things and we'd have the possibility to be taken away from our families and all the stuff that happened. And they foresaw that and they hid our lessons in the language itself. And uh, that's important. So my name in, in English is Dr. Vineo, Arnie Vineo. Uh, my uh, Ogamabanese is what the spirits call me. I live in Duluth. I work on the Fond du Lac Reservation, Minoe Allen Clinic. That means together we are well. Um, my wife and sweetheart is Ivy Vineo, who introduced me. And we have one son. And the last part, Gada Obajtuman and Shinabi Moanju Bamanazi Magak and Shinabi Ishtawan, means we do these things to keep our language and our culture alive. And um, it is alive. And it's it's a it's a living thing and the things that we work with in the Apakosa gun that we're gonna be making tonight is also a living thing. And um, so we start by harvesting the red willow is, is what we're using. So this is uh, Nisquabi Minch is the name for this and that's red willow. And this is, if you see this in the winter along the roadsides, this grows along streams and rivers and drainage ditches and around ponds and lakes and something just it kind of likes moist ground. Um, and sometimes you can go for a long ways without seeing it. And it's against the snow, it's really bright red. And then when you find it, you'll find tons of it usually. So this is this is ideal. So this nice smooth bark here. Um, when we harvest this, it's it's long sometimes. And you know, these can be eight feet long. And um, so, you know, when you harvest this, it's important to put tobacco out first. And Akawaya um, Sema, tobacco, firstly tobacco. And uh, so it, it leads all of our ceremonies. But when you put this out, you're, uh, you're acknowledging that this plant is giving you a gift. And, uh, and you wanna put that tobacco out as a sign of respect. And you think that the, the plant, anytime you're harvesting wild rice, berries. The first time you do something, you should put tobacco down for that. Maple syrup, uh, anything, anytime you cross water, uh, in, a, in a canoe or a boat or anything like that, even walking on the ice, you should put, um, you should put tobacco up for the spirits in the water. So harvesting this, you know, once you find it, it's usually in, in pretty deep snow. The time of year I was told when to harvest this, and I think different people have different, um, teachings on that, but the way I was taught 
was that we harvest this after the last thunderstorm and before the frogs sing. So the frogs, it's cold today, but they're not far away now. Um, so, and the last thunderstorm with climate change, uh, we had a thunderstorm in December, but normally that's gonna be probably October or so. So, you know, from no November to um, March, early April is when to do this. I usually do it when everybody's doing maple syrup and, and it's just kind of the way I do it. So you want this nice, red and if it's smooth like this you can kind of see that um this is you know this is smooth i purposely picked some that it's that's bumpier because that's the kind you might get you can see you know this has some gray spots on it and it's kind of drying out right there and i picked a giant one here just so um so this one is is big and heavy and this is going to be kind of hard to peel but but i'll peel that just so um so you can see what it's like. And hopefully anybody that harvested that has it and we can do this together as a project. So um, what we're after is we're, we're gonna take this, this outer, just this very red outer, outer bark off. And then there's a green layer in between there. Um, I don't know if you can see this. So, um, so, there's the wood in the center, there's the red outer bark. And then, um, I gotta get, okay. So there's that red outer bark and then there's the wood in the center. And then between there, there's a thin layer of kind of a greenish white softer bark. And that's the inner bark that we're after. So what I do when I'm, when I'm peeling this is, uh, you know, you're gonna use a paring knife, one of those, um, something like that. It doesn't have to be too fancy. Uh, before I started, before I harvested everything, I smudged all my tools and uh, we smudged them again tonight with sage. So, um, so you wanna get just this outer layer and, and you can do it like this. And you can see just, just that outer bark is, is coming off and it's coming off in really thin. I'm gonna make, I'm again, even landing any in the bag. So it's important to keep this, this all this outer bark because the sticks and this outer bark that the, the, we're going to peel off get saved and they have to be put back where they came from so it needs to go back where it came from and where it came from needs it back so um so so you, so you can do this if that's if that's easier for you and actually that doesn't come off half bad on a really thick piece like those other ones that you could scrape all day um so what i do is i is i keep the knife really flat and I run it back and forth and then I tip it up a little bit. There, you can see it and it just starts to peel it. And once, once it starts to um, come off, you can, you can get it off in big, you know, fairly long strips. And then you can go pretty fast. And you have to be careful that you don't cut too deep because um, then you lose everything. And, and, you know, you're not only wasting it, but, you know, this thing gave itself to you to, um, to use. So, um, so, so there's, there's a good start. So um, I'm gonna try to stay on camera here. So, and you can see that I'm keeping the knife really flat. Okay, gotta raise, I could either raise it up or aim this camera down a little bit. I don't know if I did a good thing there or not. Yeah, it looks good, Arnie. Okay, so. Maybe down a little bit. Yeah, I was trying to get it. I mean, just your, your hand maybe yeah oh yeah. i was looking at the wrong at the wrong <laughs> camera so um, tell how zoomy i am so um so again you want to you want to aim this you know almost flat and just tip it up a little bit so um and you'll kind of end up getting it in one direction and that's okay you'll end up leaving some small pieces that are behind knots and then if you just will just turn around and just do it the opposite direction on the way back so Again, you know, I'm trying to save all this in the bag. I'm hitting about 20% here. So, um, so there's a little bit of bark on the way back. So again, you know, so once you get going, you can actually do this pretty fast. And, and you gotta be careful not to cut too deep because um, you'll see when we start going after what we're in the center. So there I kind of made it with a too deep a cut. Um, and you don't have to go this fast, I've just done, miles of this stuff so um i can go pretty fast 
Arnie, will you share uh, about the why why you do this and what the significance of tobacco is, or is that yeah. coming yet? It is coming. Okay. So, but if, but if I don't say it, you know, I'm I'm fine with reminders. Okay. Um, so so we're after this inner bark, and you can see this is all this is all inner bark, and I I like to get all the the red stuff off. Um, but we use tobacco in our ceremony. So Wena Bojo, Wena Bojo, Nana Bojo um, gave this to Ojibwe people as a way to communicate with the creator. And um, so when you, get, when you give someone tobacco, um, usually when you give somebody, so, so tobacco, the same as tobacco and um, and this is apakosigan. So apakosigan means we're making apakosigan. And apakosigan is a particular kind of the same. It's the it, it's the inner bark of red willow. So um, and this is what we originally used. And kinik kinik is uh, this or something else mixed. It's a mixture, and people make things differently. And and sometimes I, I think. And I, I've been guilty of this, that I would worry that I'm not doing something exactly right. And somebody's gonna say, you know, you're doing it wrong. And, you know, if, if you're offering tobacco and you're putting tobacco out in the mornings or whenever you do it, or you give somebody tobacco as, this, you know, as if you ask them for a teaching or something, um, you know, don't, don't worry about that so much. Um, you know, we need to be doing that and we need to, you know, we need to be using our tobacco in a good way. Um, tobacco is given to people. If you're asking for a teaching, it's given in gratitude, um, not as a thank you for something that, you know, somebody has done for you necessarily, but respect. You know, if you're asking for a teaching, if you're asking for help with something, if you're, um, you can put it out if in the morning, if you're grateful, um, you can, uh, you know, we're, we're told that, that, uh, if you go outside at night and you look at the Milky Way on a starry, starry night, and you get away from the city lights and you look at the Milky Way, there's just an incredible number of stars. And, you know, I've been told, or we've been told that, so this is a pruning thing and I'm just gonna cut off this branch here. It's kind of in the way. So we've been told that um, spirit helpers, you know, we all have spirit helpers and you don't need to be a jib way to, to have spirit helpers, you know, we all have them. And, um, and you need to name them, you know, and you need to, the, the ones that you're asking for help, um, you know, they have names. And, and, and if you look at the Milky Way, that's how many spirit helpers we have, is that it is like the, the number of those stars. And, um, and, and you need to name them. I, I know people who, wear um, F cancer hats and, uh, you know, I haven't had cancer and I can imagine kind of some of the, you know, what they feel about, uh, you know, towards that. But cancer is, you know, we've been told cancer is a spirit and it's a powerful spirit and you don't disrespect it. And uh, so, you know, so you need to be careful the things, you know, the things that you say. And um, those spirit helpers, Bay Bob Renee Dennis Jones, um, tells us that the universe is set up to give you what you want, you know, as long as it's not excessive worldly possessions. Um, but you know that that the life that we have here is a it's a physical experience for our spirits to develop, and um, and you know, and if we ask for the right things in the right way. That's what we'll get because that's that's what that's what we need. People who live hard lives and you know gangs and drugs and whatever else, uh, you know, they don't have to ask those spirits, th those spirits that provide that kind of life. Um, they'll just show up, and the good ones that you ask to come and help you, they'll come and help you, and then they go away and they, until the next time you need them. But the ones that are bringing all that badness, they don't go away, they stay. And, um, you know, so it's important that, 
you know, that we live our lives in a, in a, in a certain way, in a good way, and we help each other. That's what we're, you know, that's what our culture is all about is, is um, helping each other. So this, so this is peeled now. So, you know, all that, that red outer bark. So I hope everybody else is kind of doing this along if you, if you can have some of this. So now what we do is we hold a knife like, like, um, like this flat and make sure you, you're not peeling into your, scraping into your other bag because I've done that plenty of times. And, and so you wanna put pressure on it and just scrape this right off. So here's what you'll get. So it's, it's this soft inner bark. And, and um, so that, that's what we're after. And this will dry and will become what, what we want. It'll, it'll become the alpha cosica. So again, so you just, you know, just move over a little bit and just scrape. And, and again, you know, you'll get a rhythm for this. And if you scrape really wide, you'll get really wide pieces. If you scrape, you know, kind of close to the last line, you'll get kind of a finer um, final product. And that's, that's what I like is that finer stuff. So again, so you just turn around and you're just gonna scrape and scrape and scrape. And yeah, so I'm, in, I'm on screen there. So, um, and you can see that, you know, that it's soft and it's wet. Um, and I just kind of peel it off. And, uh, so. Maybe Arnie, maybe you could bring it closer to the, the camera and do, just do it on the table maybe. So it's closer um, yeah, just for it, like a demonstration. Too, yeah, it's too close to the table. So, um, okay. So. Uh, so I'm, so I'm, you can see where, you know, where I'm just kind of scraping this off, but you want the knife, you know, up and down to do that, you know, kind of flat against there. And then I just kind of peel it, just tear that off. But, you know, usually end up going kind of to a knot and, you know, that's, and, um, cause it, that knots stop the knife. So, and again, I just peel this off. When you um, when you offer somebody tobacco, usually some people say put it in their left hand. Some people say that doesn't matter so much, but if it matters to some people, that's what I do. I put it in their left hand, and because it's closer to their heart. And um, and again, there are people that say that doesn't doesn't matter so much, but there are different teachings on that. So. Uh, Yes, you can do whatever your particular teaching is. So you can see that this is, um, so, you know, this is the wood here and this wood dries really, this is a hard wood when it dries. Um, but this, so this is the, the alpha closed gun here. So when you give somebody, when you offer somebody tobacco, um, you know, you offer it for a, you know, for a teaching or to ask them for help with something. And, you know, we use tobacco for healing and we use it in ceremonies. It can be smoked, it can be put outside. Uh, you can put it in tobacco ties. But so this is, so this is all from that, that one piece. So, uh, and you can see it's already starting to turn, it's starting to turn brown. So this will turn brown pretty soon. So, I, and I put it in a paper bag because it dries well in there. And I put it, we have a wood stove and I put it by the wood stove, but any source of heat, you know, it's electric heater, baseboard heater, whatever, put it in a warm place in the bag. And I, I come and I just flip it over inside. I just turn it around inside. So, it, so the center where it's really moist will dry. So let's do kind of a, a tougher one because if you, if you pick this kind, you know, it's gonna be just, it's gonna be harder to scrape. So again, um, you know, you can see there's that green inner bark. So I'm not going way down to the wood because it, it's real easy to go way down to the wood. The benefit of using these really thick ones like this, they're harder to scrape, but the bark is thicker, the inner bark. So, you know, if you're gonna get it, you get more. Um, use a pruning shear like this but but this this thing you you could be there all day trying to cut through this thing i have one of those big long handles but um so 
you know, if you're going to go out and harvest these with a knife, you're going to get kind of smaller ones because that's all you can get. Um, and, you know, when I cut this, I cut it way close to the ground because it's important to use all of it. If you're going to cut one of these things down and take its life, you know, use the whole thing. Don't just, you know, don't just use part of it. And, and we, um, have so a, can... we have a question about the harvesting kind mm -hmm. of. Um, yeah. Do you need to, to, to whittle right after you harvest? Um, it's so if you let it sit too long and you let it sit inside the house, it'll dry up and in the bark will stick like crazy. And then it's hard to get off of there. So when I harvest this, I harvest it close to the time, you know, I try to use it the same day or within a couple of days after, after harvesting it. And I keep it outside. I keep it on the deck. So if it stays cold, it'll, it, it'll stay easier to, to harvest because you want it to be, to be moist. You know, if I take these in from outside and they're frozen, that's even better because, um, you know, so you can see, you know, this is, this is coming off there and, you know, and I cut these into manageable pieces. So this is, you know, a couple of feet long. Cause if you, you know, if you have it as long as this one was over eight feet long, you know, if you try to manage one of those in the house, you have to poke out the TV and knock all your knickknacks off the shelf and poke some of it in the eye. Um, so, you know, you want to be able to manage it because you, you don't, you, you just plain don't know where the other end is once you start working these things. So you can see here, there's some, some dry, uh, you know, so yeah, no, but there's still, you know, there's still good inner bark underneath there. Cause sometimes when you get these really bumpy ones, then um, underneath is, uh, you don't, it's just wood, but you can see once you get the hang of this and I shouldn't be cutting towards myself, but um, you know, cause you can cut away from yourself just as well. And see here, I cut kind of deep here. Um, and, you know, and again, you know, you want to keep that knife just as, just flat enough. So it just cuts through that. And then you'll, you can see, this is just the green inner bark. If I get to that white stuff, it means I've cut too deep and I'm not all the way down to the wood yet, but it's pretty easy to do that. You know, when you first start doing this, it's pretty easy to cut too deep. Uh, when you offer somebody tobacco, you know, like I said, you put it in their, you put it in their hand. Um, left hand is good. Um, and when you ask them something, you, you don't give them the tobacco until you give, in, until you tell them what, you know, what it is, because, you know, once somebody accepts your tobacco, they're kind of bound to, to help you as much as they can. So, you know, if you tell them beforehand, you know, before you give them the tobacco, then they can accept it. And, um, and when somebody accepts tobacco, it, it really is kind of a, you know, kind of a bond. It's not a contract or anything, but, um, you know, but, but they will offer to help you. And when they accept the tobacco, it means they'll, they'll listen to your request in a non-judgmental way, uh, which is important, you know, that, that, that they'll listen to the merits of whatever you're asking. And, um, and if you're asking for something they can help you with, you know, that's a good thing. Uh, you know, if you're asking for a naming ceremony or, uh, you know, something important like that, uh, a handful of tobacco doesn't replace remuneration, money and gifts and stuff. There's, uh, and there's different teachings on that. But if you, you know, I mean, if you're going to have, if you want a baby name, that's, that's a bigger thing than a, you know, a little bit of tobacco on your hand. Uh, you know, the tobacco is important and I'm not downplaying that at all, but um, there's a lot of traditional people who, um, you know, the pandemic didn't make it any better, you know, that don't have a lot of resources and, you know, and the spirits know when you're capable of giving something and they know when you're holding back. So, um, you know, so you want to be, you know, you want to be fair and you want to be generous and, and generosity is, you know, one of the things that we do. And um, so again, so that I just peeled this whole thing into my into my clean stuff. So, um, Arnie, while you're while you're cooking that stuff out or whatever you're gonna do, um, can you share about like how much tobacco you should give, or is there even such a thing? Yeah, there is such a thing. So, and I don't know exactly, 
look at that. I put all, all this stuff in there. So, um, so I'll have to, I'll have to go through that. So, um, when the earth flooded in the way of Rougeau, um, and they're trying to get some, some earth to, uh, to start the world over again. The water was so deep and the, the loon dove down and, and couldn't get earth and the beaver dove down and all these powerful divers went down to try to get a handful of earth so they could put it in the Mickinac on the turtle's back to, to start the land over, to start Turtle Island. And it was a muskrat who went down and everybody kind of laughed at him a little bit because he offered to go down and he was so small and he was gone for a long, long time. And when, and finally he, he bobbed to the surface and he was, he was dead and he died in that, in that attempt. And uh, they went to go get him and, and his hand was closed and they opened it and there was a little handful of earth in there. And that's what, that's what started Turtle Island and, and was, that was the earth they needed. And then, um, so, you know, I always tell everybody, if you, if you use Walmart tobacco, you need this much. And, and uh, you know, when you're doing something, but if you, if you make this, this is hard to make. And uh, I've been told you just need, you know, that small amount, like, uh, like what Josh had in his hand. So, uh, so this is eventually what this will turn into. And you know, when I put, when I put tobacco out in the morning, so when I give, um, you know, whatever I used, you know, I use about this much. And uh, typically when you're giving tobacco to somebody for anything, what you're gonna give, the amount you're gonna give is a pipe full. And you want tobacco that's uh, not treated with a bunch of chemicals. And uh, so it, when, when Ojibwe people, Anishinaabe people were, uh, you know, before, boarding schools and before relocation settlement programs, the federal government did a resettlement thing where they wanted Native Americans to move to off reservations into the cities in the 1950s and around there with the promises of good jobs and high wages and all this stuff, uh, paradise. And, uh, and it wasn't that. My grandparents fell for that and uh, they lived in Hopkins and they were both he worked in a state sanitarium. And my grandfather made, uh, made ice cream at state sanitarium, and my grandmother worked in the laundry. And they both menial jobs. I don't know that they ever got raises. They never got promotions. They always did the same, the same job. And uh, but they went there for that promise of of high wages, and um, and a lot of people did. And you know when they did, they couldn't get this anymore. It, there was. It wasn't available, it was too far away. They were in cities, they didn't have transportation. Um, and, and so people started using commercial tobacco for, um, for ceremonies. And then it began, and it's, it's so addicting that it became easier and easier just to, to smoke it casually. And, um, and people ended up using that. And you know, I remember when I was 10 years old at a funeral, um, you know, I'd be smoking cigarettes because you know we had that last uh, tobacco of the person who's you know the funeral and uh, and and people just started smoking casually and tobacco is such a powerful medicine that it it, it you know if people use it like that if they use it the wrong way it has negative effects and you know cancers and COPD and you know, all the other stuff that comes with it yeah. Um, so, you know, there's a, there are a lot of elders that, you know, that want this kind of tobacco. You, you can see here that, you know, there's still, there's still good tobacco on here. There, yeah, good bark on here. This is so thick. This is that really heavy piece that, you know, it takes a while to get it down there. But you don't really want to scrape too hard because you're going to end up with a whole bunch of the, the wood. And I'll show you what that looks like here. Yeah, can you yeah, show, it's either, bring it closer? That? Can you bring it closer? Like you, you were saying, see how you can see where there's still oh. some on there and we yeah. couldn't so, see. So can you see better here? So, yep. oops. So 
Um, yeah, so it's still on there. And you can see when I get down to the, you know, when I get down to the wood and I get all that bark off. But um, but there's there's still a lot of it, you know, on here. So, and again, you can see here, even though I scraped this off, there's still a lot. The right bag under there. So, um, there's you know, a couple questions too, Arnie. Okay. Are you, can I ask him? Yep. All right. So um, I've heard the red bark can be saved and made into a tea. Any truth to that? I don't know. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I think I've heard that from um, folks like uh, Veronica Bratfold, Awanuk up mm -hmm. in uh, Red Lake um, and Linda Black Elk. So those would be good resources to reach out to on that. They're both on social media. Um, and then the other one is, what are your thoughts on offering plug as a gift? I remember my grandmother trading with it when I was a kid. Now it's considered only Western doorway for the block in hand. It's only- um... Like the, at funerals where they put the plug in between the fing fingers. Yeah, and th that's the only way that I, that I know it is, you know, is that way. So, you know, again, I don't know. You know, when I said initially, Bungi Ojibwe, you know, that I, you know, I don't know how to speak that much Ojibwe. Uh, that's the truth. You know, I'm still learning that. And there's, you know, there are a lot of teachings that, uh, you know, I think we need to help each other with. And... Uh, And that's happening on the chat because um, Mary Ellen just said, answered the question about the, the, the peelings, the red peelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good medicine for pain. So. See, and that's, and that, that is good to know. And, you know, good that we can use uh, all of that. So, you know, and when you're doing a lot of this stuff, you know, I make a lot of this, so, um, you know, when I start making it, I, you know, I do, I do a lot. So, so this is how much I brought with, and, uh, and I probably have, uh, is there, yeah, I mean, in, with the stuff that's, that's out in the other room and in, in the bag, you know, I have twice that much, you know, that I'll, you know, that I'll finish. And, and I have quite a bit at home that I've already, that I've already done. Um, how are we doing for time? We have, uh, we're at 7.11. Um, so we got about 20 minutes left. Okay. So, um, so again, you know, and then I tried to put it into my good stuff here again. So that's an important thing. That's all good. So someone also wanted to know um, how soon you kind of address this in the beginning, I believe. Um, how soon do I need to take the red bark and the 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 remainder of the the stick back to where it came from? Um, I don't know that there's a, a you know set time to do that. Usually when when I do this, when I start doing it, you know, I usually do maybe three or four different batches. So you know, I'll do um, one set and then I keep all the stuff at home. And, um, and then when I go out to get the second, you know, because I, I pick as much as I can finish. You know, if you pick too much, if you get, you know, anytime you pick anything, whether it's sweet grass or, you know, red willow or whatever, um, you know, you want, you want to just do as much as you can use. And, you know, so then when I go back for this, for the second step, you can see little greenness is here. So this is just, you know, this is just the very outer that's coming off. Here. This is coming off really nice. And, and, and that's what you're going for, you know, but when you, when you pick something, you want to pick just as much as you can use. So, you know, every time I do, I bring that back and then when I'm done, so this is the, you know, the last, you know, the frogs are going to sing pretty soon. So this will be the last of, um, you know, what I harvest this year. And, um, so we harvested this on Sunday and I'll, you know, I'll try to get it back out there by, uh, you know, by this weekend. So I don't know if there's a, a set time. And 
you know, and I think, you know, maybe a lot of people that do this, I don't know if they, you know, if everybody necessarily brings all the stuff back, but that's what I was taught. And, you know, so that's important. Uh, so, and when I bring it back, I'll put tobacco all with it again. And, uh, you know, thank the spirit of this for, you know, for giving itself for, uh, and, and I, you, you know, I do a ceremony every morning, um, you know, and, and we live ceremonious lives, I think. And, um, you know, there's a lot of times when, you know, a lot of this stuff is, um, you know, we have seven grandfather teachings and one of them is Zaga Edwin is love. And, uh, but Joanum is a, um, so Zaga Edwin is, is like kind of love between two people and, uh, you know, or, you know, close people. And Joanum is unconditional love. It's kind of love our, our ancestors have for us. And, um, and, you know, when we do things, when we, you know, sometimes gazaga in, which is, means I love you, it's a hard thing to say. You know, it's got a G in it, it's got a Z in it. You know, try it in Finnish, mean a Rakhistan sinua. You know, or even English is hard. I love you. People don't say that. And, um, and, and that's medicine. That's, you know, that's the basis of medicine. You know, that's the basis of why people learned how to harvest these things, how to use all this traditional knowledge is, you know, it's out of love and it's, and it's trying to take care of each other and take care of our elders. And, and uh, you know, they're the repository for all our, all of our knowledge. And, uh, you know, so it's, it, it's important. And when, when you're doing this, you know, when you're making any of this, then this is part of that ceremony. You can see here that I kind of, was going to scrape a little piece off and I cut kind of deep there. But um, so watch me move my bar and put the wood bag underneath. So that's the way to do it. So, um, you know, so, so again, when you're doing this, you know, once you get the hang of this, you know, can you see this okay? Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, so again, you, you know, you're scraping this off and if it doesn't come easy or, or you end up scraping too deep, you know, that's just, that's how you learn. And, uh, you know, but once you start using your own apocosica and your own tobacco, you know, put that out in the morning and, you know, in the morning when you put this out, you know, at a minimum, you want to thank each direction. You want to start in the East, Wabana. You want to, you want to thank each direction, the spirits that live in that, in that direction. And you want to go clockwise. So you want to go to the South next. Uh, and then to the west in Gabi, you know, and when I enter, you know, you're, you're thanking those spirits. So, um, you know, when I put this out in the morning, you know, I, um, I introduce myself. So the, the spirits know who's talking, you know, so it's just not the disembodied voice talking to them. So, you know, kind of doing that every morning, you know, who my client is, what my Ojibwe name is, uh, you know, that I've connected to Ivy and, um, you know, you know, all of that stuff is important. And then, Monitu, Gajananu, Kigawiti, Wabanu, we do question on Abadji Tuyang, Anishinaabe, Shetwala, Minawa, Anishinaabe, Moen. So, Miigwech, spirits in the East, Thank you for allowing us to use our language and culture in a good way. And, um, you know, and then you go, you know, to the South Shawana, West Ngabinung, uh, to the North Kiwetanung, and then Manatuguri, Gadanunokik, Nibikong, we do Kuishanab, Jobat, Kuyang, Nishanabe, Trawa, Minawa, Nishanabe, Moon. So the spirits in the water. You want to thank uh, Kumasan, the um, Mother Earth, and DJ Manadu. You know, people say Gichi Manadu, the Great Spirit. Uh, DJ Manadu means the Gentle Spirit, kind of the Great Mystery. And then, you know, individual spirits. You know, I I thank God, the 
the winter maker, the Orion constellation, Anangwag, the stars, the Biki Jesus, the moon, you know, and, and then um, I put tobacco up for uh, a sub acacia cozy one, you know, the cancer spirit. And, uh, a sub means is a net. A sub means to make a net. And a sub acacia is the one who makes the net. And in, you know, cancer is like a spider and then not, spiders are good. And, uh, you know, they can weird everybody out, but, but they have a purpose and they're part of the, they're part of things, but a sub acacia cozy one, is the, is the spirit of that, that creeps in like that you know, the way cancer does. And, uh, and I put tobacco out for the spirit every morning. And I put tobacco out by name for all the patients and friends that I have with, with cancer. And, it, and that list is getting to be longer and longer. And Moshka Bay was wanted to do spirit helpers, put tobacco out. And by name, again, you know, people who are having a hard time and are struggling and, um, you know, I put tobacco off for them by name. So it takes me quite a while to do that in the morning and I put that down. And, um, and I, I think of George Earth, he was uh, introduced to my parents and he died a few years ago. George and I were family. And um, I always, when I put my tobacco on, I always say, to George, you know, good morning. And, uh, uh, thank you so much. And Kazagi, and you know, I love you, George. And I say that to my mother now, Gisus but same things. And I, uh, my father died by suicide when I was four years old. And we don't have ceremonies to um, make that okay and make that better. And uh, at least the, the none that I know of. And I was at a washing away the tears ceremony. And it was the, the one of the names for Finnish people. So I'm Finnish. So Viney was a Finnish name. So I'm half Finnish and half, half Ojibwe. But we were at a ceremony and it was spring and they had a fire outside and the, the it was clear and the, all the stars were out. Um, God, Bukunkade, the Orion, the winter maker was out. And I was watching all that smoke go straight up into the, into the night sky. And the fire was hot and I put tobacco into that, into that fire, I put some of this tobacco into that fire. And I, uh, Galgiji means to appease, to, to apologize to. Uh, Gagi Zatagazi means forgiveness. I forgave my father that night for dying by suicide and I asked his forgiveness and um, when you put tobacco out you know there's griefs that was I was four years old that was 50 years ago that happened and I still think of them every morning because I, I say every morning to him you know I say Kitos Pallion in Finnish Arnie Vainio Isa my father Mina Rakastan Simla you know I love you and I put tobacco out and um, it's not a finished thing, you know, but when you put tobacco out, you know, all of us have grief. And um, when you put tobacco out, it, the spirits take a little bit of that grief every day. And if it takes me every single day of my life putting tobacco out to make that grief go away, that's, that's a pretty fair deal. And, uh, and I'm okay doing that. And, uh, you know, and it's the thing, I feel good doing it. It doesn't matter how busy it is, how rainy it is, how snowy it is, how late I woke up, hit the snooze button. I do that ceremony every single morning. It's important. And sometimes I'm scrambling to make my coffee, you know, because I wasted, oh, I almost peeled this into my good stuff. So, um, Arnie, we have lots of questions too. And okay, let's have Adam. So I think I probably said, you know. Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Okay, I have a couple too, but now I got to scroll back. Um, can you use it in your pipe? Yes. So uh, 
you know, and some people, you know, do mix things, you know, with this and, and that's fine. If somebody teaches how to do that, you know, and, you know, do that. Um, you know, I, I so much like the, the way this comes out that, you know, that I just use this by itself. But yes, I, I, I have a pipe I was given and, uh, and I, I smoke this in that pipe. Okay. Um, and do you know if there's any specific women's teaching related to harvesting and collecting the tobacco? I don't know that. And, and you know, women's teaching, you know, I, I guess I wouldn't be privy to and I, and I wouldn't pretend to know that, you know, there's, there's, some, there's some powerful women in this community and all communities, you know, that, uh, that you can find, you know, that, you know, going back to that, you know, when I said Gagi Zatagazi means forgiveness, um, you know, that's important for each of us to know that, um, you know, there, there are people that rub us the wrong way and there are people we don't like. Uh, you need to get rid of that. And, some, and, and it's hard, it's, it's, you know, I was gonna say sometimes it's hard, it's always hard. You know, and you know, if somebody doesn't like us for whatever reason, it means that we we said something on when they're having a bad day. You know, they stub their toe in the morning, they hit the snooze button too many times. Who knows? You know, but but you know, people, you know, that happens. There's an old saying that says, you know, because sometimes you know, you, you not only kind of don't like somebody, you kind of smile inside when something bad happens to them. Um, and, and we need to not be like that. And, uh, you know, there is an old saying that says, when you choose revenge, dig two graves. And, um, you know, there's truth in those old sayings. And, um, you know, we need, to, we need to cut each other a huge amount of slack. So other questions? Okay, Sorry. other questions. Yeah, there's a few. Um, how long would you let, how long does it take to dry? Or how long should you let it sit to dry? Days. So, you know, weeks I've got. Well, let me, let me, uh, this is what it comes out to. So, yeah. so this, is, this is what's in that bag. So th this, is, this is how it dries. And you can see there's some white in here, right here. That's, uh, I cut too deep and that's some of the wood. Uh, so, you know, I go through here and I pull all that out because, you know, I want it clean. So there's another piece. This is, I cut too deep and uh, where is it? Where? So right there, this is, you know, this is a little bit of wood where I just scraped too hard and, and you know, not thinking and there's a big chunk of it right there. So, um, you know, so again, you know, that's, that's, that's wood, but you know, but this this should dry, and, and you, you can hear it, okay. And then once you know, once it once it dries, and it's long like this, then I just crush it up a little bit, and and if it's dry, it'll it'll break into the finer stuff that you want. Into the, um, it'll be the right consistency. And, and again, you, you know, the stuff you, that I, what's that? And you put it by the stove and then you kind of go and mix it up a little bit after. A yeah. And I just, I just reach in the bag and I just flip over the whole thing and I, you know, kind of pull it apart. And I do that when I think of it. So, you know, hopefully a couple times a day, but you want it in a, you know, in a dry place and you want it in a warm place and then it'll just dry and it'll come out like that. And, um, and I make enough, there's an elder that, that loves this stuff. And, and I know he, I've given it to him every year. I give him a big bag of it. And, uh, and he's come to expect that. And he should expect that, you know, and I should be, I should be dependable and I should be able to get it to him. And, um, you know, but I always make sure that, that when I'm making it, that I make an extra batch because he's got it. He's very traditional and he's got to have enough to last him through the year. Okay. So it's 727, but we got a few questions. Um, Last time, Arnie used a carrot peeler. This time, a knife. What's the difference between tools? Um, I don't remember ever using a carrot peeler. I think um, you did once. I think I remember that. Um, I think, you know, as long as you get it off. Um, well, that really surprises me. So, um, 
because because when I was taught how to use this, these knives, this knife, you can see I fixed it with JB Weld here. It's all traditional dojo blade fix and maybe even finish. And um, you know this this knife fell apart because that's a it's a rummage sale knife. It was a quarter, and I had two of them. And um, but this, these are the knives that we used when I was taught how to make this, and this is the one I always use when I make it. So it's important for me to wire it and tape it and JB weld it back together, you know, whatever I have to do. And um, so, um, yeah, I don't remember using the carrot peeler, but, you know, I guess that would be fine. So, yeah. you know, you're trying to take off as long as you smudge it first. Um, it, so, uh, okay, let me go to the next question. Okay. Um, and this this question, I have a, a a second part to it. Is there an appropriate or inappropriate way to accept tobacco given to you, or I think even an appropriate way to give give it to somebody? And can non native people give tobacco to other native people? Um, you know, I think when, you know, when you give somebody tobacco, you give it in a good, in a good heart. And this is not, you know, some kind of an aha thing that, you know, you tricked them into accepting tobacco and now we're going to have to, you know, hand over the keys to the BMW or whatever. Um, you know, so, um, you know, you have to do this with a good heart. And, and I think, uh, you know, I have, and I, you know, I don't know. It, and you know there might be a real traditional teaching that says otherwise, but um, I worked with for years with a social worker in the hospital, and he's not native, but just a, a good good man. And he um, two years before he retired, you know, I, I would see him in the morning. It's like, hey, Kevin, how's it going? And he's like, five hundred and thirty four days and sixteen hours till till re retirement. And, um, and he kept counting down. And when he retired, he went on a 48 state motorcycle ride that he signed every morning, night you check in at a hotel or wherever you are. And then in the morning, it'll say who's gonna meet, you know, motorcycles. And you ride for days with some people and one day with some people and half a day with some people. And, and the, but there's this whole pack of motorcycles that's doing a 48 state ride. And I gave him tobacco. And, and I said, Kevin, you know, you are going to see a sunrise like you've never seen before in your life. You're going to see a sunset before, or somebody's going to have something bad happen to him on that ride. And um, I want you to put this down. You know, I want you to put this out when, when any of those things happen. And, uh, and he did. And, you know, for all of those things, I just gave some to somebody who's deploying to the Middle East. She doesn't know where she's going. She's going for four months. And, um, and she doesn't know what's gonna to happen to her. And uh, she's not native at all and, and has her own spirituality. And I, and I gave her tobacco um, yesterday, some of this, and I told her the same thing, you know, beautiful sunrise, beautiful sunset. You know, you're gonna see something that you can't fix. And when that happens, you know, use this. And um, this is Gazagi and this is Joanna, and this is love. This is the pity that and, and love that our ancestors have for us. And um, I would rather have somebody do something with a good heart and get it not exactly right by the book than to not do it. Which, um, at, in your role as a uh, family practice physician, um, with the the high rates of um, heart disease and COPD and all of that stuff, how does that? How do you work in? Um, both worlds with the the tobacco with this sacred tobacco and so this is yeah so go ahead no then you go ahead so so this is not four thousand chemical additives commercial tobacco 
And um, if this is used traditionally, you know, I've talked to um, elders and people that are really traditional with it, you know, that say this isn't, you know, this isn't going to cause all those things. And, and I believe that, uh, you know, if people are using this traditionally and using it in a good way and using, you know, there is no additive to this, it's, you know, it's, it's not addicting, you know, unless going out and putting it out every single day is something you have to do. If that's an addiction, that's, that's fine. Um, I give this to brand new babies when they're born. And, and when, when babies are born, um, I talk to the babies, not the parents, I talk to the babies about going to medical school, you know, that this is, you know, this path starts now and I give them tobacco. I give them this, the same one to, you know, for their parents to put their cord stump in, in a medicine bag. And then when that, when that child turns 18 or becomes of age and independent, whatever, that's their responsibility. But, um, you know, there's a bunch of babies out on the Fond du Lac reservation and other, otherwise that have their cords packed in Apakosia. And, um, and I know it's important to parents and, you know, I know it's, it's not, it's, it, it's not because of who I am. It's because of who I represent and what I represent. And, uh, you know, 18 years from now, there's going to be a baby handed a, a, a bag on a necklace, a leather bag on a necklace with her cord and, and packed in tobacco that I made and an up a cozy gun I made. And that's going to be important. And it's going to be a thing that gets passed on. And, uh, and I understand that's, not a common thing and and that's why it's important you know we used to be communities that took care of our our kids and when we were in a rice camp or a maple sugar bush or whatever you know you almost you didn't really even have to watch your kids if they wanted to go learn something they would go learn it from somebody and we took care of each other and we took care of each other's kids and we shared things and nobody had a lot of stuff because if somebody got a lot of stuff they shared it with everybody else and they knew that day would come when somebody would do that for them and, um, you know, we need to share our gifts and we need to not be critical of each other. And we need to, Gagi Zatabazi, we need to forgive. We need to join them. We need unconditional, non-judgmental love, compassionate love. And um, that's what medicine and tradition are all about. Agreed. Um we're kind of over time, but I wanted to just see if you could just kind of go over um, when you harvest and when you stop harvesting. Because someone said that they were uh, weren't able to harvest any tonight for the session, but was hoping for early May, and they didn't know if that was going to be over so again. Time. Yeah, you know, again. You know, there, there are probably different teachings on it and somebody might have something different even on here. But what I was told and what I abide by is after the last thunderstorm and before the frogs sing. Is there, uh, you're getting a lot of chi miigwiches, um, miigwich Arnie for all your beautiful sharing and spreading that unconditional love. Uh, so, I think I'm going to um, close out our session by saying chi miigwech, apajigo miigwech to ogamabanes uh, for sharing uh, these lessons and traditions with Asema. And um, a lot of this is new to some people and we hope at ECHO that you take these teachings to heart and that you share these teachings with others um, just like Arnie was saying that, you know, as a community we share. And so um, I'm going to email this recording. Also the, the Zoom link, or not the Zoom link, the YouTube, well, no, sorry. Now I'm getting all mixed up. The survey link um, to get your feedback on, on, on the session and the, this teachings. I will share that, share the findings with Arnie and with the ECO leadership team and with the funder. And so I really hope that you'll take just a few minutes to, to, to complete that. I did put it in the uh, chat as well, 
the link. Um, but uh, Miigwech for joining us. Uh, Arnie, do you have any final thoughts or anything that you wanna share before we sign off here? Yeah, you know, so it, people have regrets and bad days and wish things were better and a bunch of other stuff. Um, when I put tobacco out in the morning, I put tobacco out for uh, and also. Bidabin means the dawn comes, but there's a, as the sun rises right at that interface between night and day when the sun is just coming up and you see that first break of sunlight, Bidabin is a spirit that travels the earth and, um, and she puts yesterday behind her and, and, it's, and it's in the past, you know, it's still there and you can see it and you can learn from it, but it's, but it's in the past, you know, it's your chance to make, to make things better every single day. And, um, and, and don't forget that. And, you know, people get stuck and they get in bad situations and they, they think they're trapped and a whole bunch of other stuff. And, you know, you need to be not be abused and stuff, but, um, but, you know, there's, it's a new day. It's always a new day. And the universe is set up to give us what we want. And those spirit helpers are there to help when, when they're called upon. So, um, oh, yes, yes. So uh, someone is saying that there's a podcast from Joseph Pitwanaquat that talks about Red Willow and making tea as well. Wanted to share in re reciprocity for what was shared tonight. Me glitch for this opportunity to learn uh me glitch for that i will um i will share that link in the the email that i send out to everyone so everybody can get that youtube link um me glitch for that uh me glitch everybody for joining us tonight we try to do these sessions uh culture and cu cultural knowledge and spiritual knowledge uh events via via zoom for accessibility for a lot of people, especially during the pandemic and the pandemic is still here. We're, we're not clear of that yet. So um, be sure to, to, to look on uh, American Indian Community Housing Organization Facebook page um, for upcoming events, um, information. We put so much uh, information on that, that page for our community. Uh, so uh, that should be a page that you follow. And um, yeah, so miigwech again for joining us. Miigwech to Becky. I always like forget to publicly thank Becky and Becky's just, <laughs> she just gave me a heart. <laughs> um, she's just been so amazing. She's been with me for two years now with these uh, virtual sessions and she has been an amazing Zoom tech and I could not do this without her. And so uh, Chimigwich, Becky Nelson for, for helping out tonight and Miigwech to everybody that came out tonight and uh, feel free to, to reach out. I will be sending my email. Um, and also just last thing, Arnie does um, have some, he does a, a he writes, well, he hasn't for a while, but um, can you share a little bit about, just a little bit, and that we'll end it with that, your writing, Arnie, and where people can find your writing, your articles. Um, yeah, indians.com um, has them archived. Um, they used to be on Indian Country News, but that site is no longer, so. Uh, but and those are health articles. Also. Yeah. So Native Report on um, Public Television, WDSE, has a segment that's been going for the last four years or so. If people wanted to reach out to you um, as a follow-up, how did they do that? Uh, I guess my email must be in the thing there somewhere. I will put that in the in the email that I send out as well. Okay.
Oh, so someone's cat snagged down some of the asema and chewed it down. <laughs> so it should be okay. I think so. Yeah, so there's Arnie's email, but I will send it in the, the what I send out. Um, miigwech, and we'll see you next time. Gigawabamen, everyone. Be well. Gigawabamen. Take care.